We have here with us Dr. Prem Shep, consultant neonatologist and head of department pediatrics, Bombay Hospital. We will be speaking about respiratory distress syndrome. For the benefit of our listeners, could you tell us what exactly respiratory distress syndrome is? Respiratory distress syndrome is a syndrome usually seen in preterm infants or babies caused due to the deficiency of a substance called surfactant, which is a natural outcome, a lining material in the babies. And this surfactant reduces the work of breathing and keeps the lungs partially open. Whenever the baby is breathing or any one of us are breathing, there is an alveoli which collapses, but there is some substance which is a rubber-like thing which keeps it partially open and that is deficient in preterm infant and that's what it leads to respiratory distress syndrome. How many cases of respiratory distress syndrome have you seen in the last year and what are the clinical features that clinch the diagnosis? Respiratory distress syndrome, I would say out of 200 babies in a neonatal ICU where I work, there were about 25 came with respiratory distress syndrome. Clinical features include respiratory distress, usually noted within first one hour of birth and maybe improves gradually or may require an increased requirement of oxygen. Now normally one breathes 21% oxygen but they go over to 30, 40%, 50% of oxygen. Now out of the 20, 25 babies which we saw, out of 30, 20 to 30% of the babies require ultimately ventilation. They do not improve with either plain simple good oxygen. What is the line of treatment that you would recommend now? Now, line of treatment depends on the situation. Here's a baby which is born, a small baby. First, we have to say that this baby has to be put in a neutral position. You give supplemental oxygen. After giving it supplemental oxygen, you'll have, if he doesn't improve, you have a continuous positive pressure that is called CPAP. And this CPAP, then we go to ventilation and surfactant. Now let's take another situation that a pediatrician who is present at the time in the delivery and he finds a baby which is 28 weeker, born and doesn't breathe well. What needs to be ideally done, that this kid has to be intubated, given surfactant, then put on CPAP and after CPAP, whenever is if required, he does not improve with CPAP, then the ventilator is necessary. Nowadays, more than more, CPAP is being used, that is continuous positive airway, airway ventilation, pressure. So you have a positive pressure and you have given surfactant, which is a lining material, keep it at seven or eight centimeters of water according to the weight of the baby and it improves quite a bit. So basically, putting these children on ventilator are reducing day by day. And this, the advantage of CPAP is that it is less complicating or less complication with CPAP than with ventilator. Could you tell us about surfactant therapy and according to you, how much should be given, who should receive it and when? Now, first of all, surfactant is temporary replace the normal human non-human surfactant as early as possible as i said that now it has been shown that when you give in the labor ward it is a better effect instead of taking out the time and the advantage of surfactant is that it reduces the work of breathing and trauma to the lungs so surfactant used should be earlier if you want to give instead of postponing after 24 hours because the baby gets tired with a rapid work of breathing. What are the types of surfactants available in the market? 
there is an artificial surfactant which is called exosurf, surfact, alec. There are natural surfactant which are bovine, porcelain and they are surfactant extract which are available in the market under the name of Cerventa, Neosurf and Curosurf. Now dosage of surfactant is about 100 to 200 milligrams per kilo per dose and the easiest way is to give about 4 ml. They have this 4 ml in 200 milligrams of liquid. So 4 ml per kilogram may be repeated 8 to 12 hourly as the requirement is there. 2 to 3 times intra tracheally. One point which I want to say that surfactant can be given as I say one is prophylactic as when talking, another rescue thing. And when do we give? I think today we are giving too much of surfactant in the market or too many, any respiratory distress, whether it is total or any distress is given a surfactant. Please remember there are a lot of complications following surfactant also. The rule of the game is that if the FR2 requirement is more than 30% to 50% and if mean airway pressure is more than 8 centimeters or one need to take out arterial alveolar ratio and when you take out arterial alveolar ratio if it is less than 0.2 then surfactant is advised. As again I will repeat surfactant is required not very often as it is required in the west because there is already a stress factor in our mothers so they have produced enough catecholamine and enough surfactant. Point number two, to put the babies with surfactant and ventilator, you require a trained, a very trained staff with a tertiary level labor in ICU with black gases, arterial lines and total parenteral nutrition. Just giving surfactant and putting them on ventilator does not improve the outcome. Thank you. What are the co complications of the treatment like surfactant treatment or CPAP treatment that you have encountered and how are they to be managed? The complications of surfactant or the ventilation. The question is putting these children on CPAP if one does not know to think about what are the pressures like. Number two, are tubes which are wet. It's for example when you are giving your water pot is giving you a high temperature and the whole tube is full of water you'll get lot of secretions and fluid in the lungs third with a high pressure you can bombard with whether ventilation or CPAP is pneumothorax intrapulmonary hemorrhages chronic lung disease because the pressures are up and down fourth thing happens ventilator associated pneumonia and fifth is what one exactly happens that you develop ARDS because when we are giving pressures, we are brain giving pressures, some alveolar are collapsed, one are big and by giving bigger pressures, we really damage and damage the lung alveolar very badly. Last but not the least, we need to look into the economic issues. Each dose of surfactant is 7,000 to 10,000 rupees along with ventilation, along with blood gases and please don't forget the total parental nutrition and nursing charges. How can we prevent respiratory distress syndrome? Over the years, Ligitz found out antenatal steroids. Antenatal steroids are known to mature the lungs and increase the quantity of surfactant in preterms. The best they have, they have been given is beta methazone. The dose is 8 to 12 milligrams every 12 hours, at least as three doses. Within 24 hours, if you can give, if you know that the mother has come for delivery at 28 weeks, you give this and sustain and wait for 48 hours. And believe me, the respiratory distress incidence goes down and down and down. You will be able to do it with a little CPAP. No surfactant, no ventilator will be required. You will find these children do much, much better on a follow-up follow -up 
without any complication. The other medication which has been tried is thyrotropin releasing hormone where a lot of studies have been done but it is not still proved and come into the market. Thank you ma'am for your experiences.